found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Damn it, I'm upset. We usually go into the show with um, the music and all of the fanfare, but um, this week is different. Uh, it's different for a multitude of reasons, all of which you can see on your television screens every night. I want to tell everybody something, and it's something that's important to me, um, and it should be important to everyone else. Um, if you've been following me on, on Facebook, you'll see that I posted a video, and it was a humorous video with um, Noah, I can't remember his last name, the new, um, the guy that took over John Stewart's spot, spot on the late show, um, on the daily show, I should say. Anyway, what he was saying makes a lot of sense, is are we able to keep two thoughts in our heads at one time? Is it because you are pro um, black Lives Matter or pro-black, does that mean you at automatically anti-police? No. No, it does not mean that. But I'm going to tell you something about me. I am very pro-black. I am very anti-corrupt police. And there's a difference between police and corrupt police. I have policemen and people that were police in my family. I have people, of, anyone that knows me knows that the racial thing really doesn't mean anything. I can still be pro-black and be pro-Jewish, pro-white, pro-Mexican. I'm pro-everything in that regards. What I am not pro is I am, I am not pro-evil. And there's some people that use their authority in evil ways, and we might as well call it what it is. And we shouldn't have to take a side in order to identify evil when it, when it shows its ugly head. Okay? So... All that being said, what happened last night in Dallas was horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous, and no one condones that. My issue is we've seen all of the news coverage go to Dallas to these brave men that swore an oath to protect us, and some of them were cut down by this idiot, this criminal idiot that was shooting them in towers, and at the same time, we completely forget about, what's his name, Alton Sterling. Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. And Philando Castile. Yeah. It seems like the media totally turned away from these two gentlemen who didn't you know, make some sort of oath to put their lives in jeopardy to serve someone else. Does that make their lives any less valuable? No. Be because they were just one of them was Alton, I believe. No, it was uh, Philando. It was just in a car with his girlfriend and her four year old daughter with a and seat with belt a, on, with a with a busted tail light. And so, is his life? Did he have to swear some sort of oath for him to get proper justice? For him to get people to actually stand up and say what happened to him was criminal. And by all means, like I'm saying, it's not every police officer. We know that, but it's enough of them for them to have to go in house and root out this contagion from within and get rid of it. I heard something on the radio today, Woody, that was so upsetting to me. What's that? It was a, um, a, a city official or a police official out of Ferguson, Missouri saying that um, the police feel frightened because many of the black lives, um, black lives matter protesters are saying, you no. Know, bad things to them and threatening their families and things of that sort. That's so much bull. I, even if that's the case, even if that were the case, they are talking about it, not doing it, obviously. Listen, uh, you know, it, it is, this has been a compounding issue in black America ever since I was a young boy, ever since I was old enough to realize what was being done to me uh, as a, as an African American, uh, as a driver, um, uh, as one, as a person just growing up in, in the street, just living my life. Um, you know, what's upsetting about this is I, I think for, uh, you know, 
as I grew up, and this this is this is what's so shameful in terms of the acceptability of this all. And I'm just going to backtrack a little bit so so folks can understand out there who have not fallen victim to some of the circumstances that these young men like Alton Sterling and Philandro Castile have. Mm -hmm. But as a young man in Maryland growing up, I got pulled over by the police very often. And it was just a way of life, and you just expect it to. Exactly. If you saw them, if you made eye contact, they would pull you over. Exactly. They would harass you. You had to stand by the car while they searched your car. They said you look like a, a robbery suspect that robbed a bank down the street. I don't mm -hmm. know how many times I was told that. I'm sure all of you can identify with that, and please you know, tune in and, and, and text your opinions on, on our Facebook page right now. But what I'm saying is that when I found out that white folks did not know this was happening. They had no clue. I was shocked because I thought everyone, everyone knew, knew exactly. that this was happening to us. And that's the that's this thing about it that's is so it's frustrating. People don't understand the frustration. Yes. And I and I get it. And I said this before in a previous show. I said that I get how uncomfortable it would be if you haven't lived this experience. Right. I understand that the way that your you can only deal with what's going on in your environment. And if your interaction with some law enforcement has been positive for your life you have to say to uh, th throughout your life i should say you would have to say well that person must have done something right. in order for the yeah. police to react that way the police would never do that when now, in actuality the it happens do. now this is and again i'm going to say this quite a bit tonight i know some fantastic policemen of the highest moral character the majority of them are and the majority of them are they are but there is an element from within that they need to root out. They need to get them the hell out of there yeah. because they have no business being in a position of authority. If you're the type of dude that you already had an attitude problem, you don't need a badge and gun. If you're the type of guy that has some sort of racial bias that will automatically cause your mind to think certain things about certain people based on their race, ethnicity, or even their economic level. Because I get treated better now, maybe because I have gray hair, I'm not younger, and I'm in a, a different social status. Yeah, so you speak. drive a Bentley. So it's a diddly. <laughs> <laughs> so evidently it's a little bit different. But right. if I was a young black man and I was driving around in a, a different neighborhood, mm -hmm. then there's a good chance I'll be treated differently. And if you have a badge and a gun, that doesn't mean that gives you a right to automatically assume judgment on this guy or antagonize him. I yeah. mean, it's so much frustration and pent up anger before right. the police officer even comes to the car. Yeah. That is already a tense situation. Because you're being pulled over for a broken headlight and you lose your life. We got a caller. Oh, they hung up. Yeah, you, you lose your life over. So, yeah, there. Okay, listen. I don't know what the proper procedure, police procedure, but it, it seems to me if there's a, a gentleman in the car with his wife, assumingly, and a baby in the back seat, uh, and his seatbelt on, he announces, "Hey, I have a he announces I have, he I has have a license gun. to carry. I have a gun." Exactly. And he says, "Let me see your registration, your your driver's license, or whatever your ID." And he reaches for it and he shoots him because he had an excuse to shoot him because he had a firearm. And and he shoots him, which is terrible. And then in front almost, of the baby. almost as bad is this in front of the baby and his girl, and he's not after he's wounded, he's not a, trying to apply any pressure to the wound. He's still pointing the gun at he's him. He's still pointing the gun at him and watching him die, die right, right in there, front of him. Right. And if he had moved, he would have shot him again. And if he had made an aggressive move to open the door to maybe get out of the car, he would have shot him again. He had the gun pointed on him while he was dying and never moved from that position. So, According to uh, MappingPoliceViolence.org, um, back in 2015, police killed at least 102 unarmed black people. And oh, it's the, numbers, the number's climbing. That the was in 2015. Climbing. And remember, not many of them are put to video, but when you have something put to video and you still have any questions about whether or not it's legitimate, do you need to check your own heart? Here's the thing. You know, mm -hmm. the Alton Sterling case, and people may, may may disagree with me on this, and I watched this mm -hmm. this footage back, you know, for uh, quite a few times. Uh, he, he had a gun in his pocket. They had him on the ground. First of all, let's back up. The approach. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the approach, and let's talk about policing neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Let's stop driving around policing. Let's get out. Let's walk the beat. Because had they known his sister or his mother, 
there would have been a different conversation. Hey, Absolutely. Alton, how you doing? I know your mama. Okay. Hey, what's going on? We got a report. That situation could have been taken care of. Community much, policing. Community correct. policing. Instead of tackling the guy, if you get tackled, if someone tackles you out of the blue, automatically you get angst and you want to, you know, you, you set the tempo for disaster. There's uh, an element, again, within the – not the whole, but there's an element within the department. Just a second, caller. Caller, there's an element within the the department that almost makes it seem as if these police officers, which are by and large good people doing their jobs, but it makes them feel like they're going off into a war zone, and the right. the, the communities they go with to are the enemy. Are, are the enemy. They are almost going out in a military it's not mind to protect frame. and serve us. It's, it's not to protect and serve. Us. It's to patrol. Yeah. It's not to protect and serve, but to patrol, to police and patrol. And you can't have that sort of mentality going across, uh, uh, going within neighborhoods where they already feel oppressed because you've been dealing with stuff within this neighborhood for generations. And the police officers are unfamiliar with the people in that neighborhood. They're threatened is, is by Is the caller still there or did they hang up? They hung they're, up. they're threatened. They are threatened by folks that they're unfamiliar with. They're threatened by black males. You got to get out of the cars. You got to police the neighborhoods. You have to learn you who it have is to that you know are. Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, is that. Um, and there's a big variation in terms of the, the sheriff's department versus the LAPD. The sheriff's department, you, you are required to go through the prison system. So therefore, you learn about hmm. prisoners, criminals, black, white, Latinos versus the LAPD. Let, which let, you let me get this um, call real quick. Okay, Caller, can ahead. we have your, your name and the city you're calling in from, please? Carl Burrell. How you doing, Brian? Carl hey, Burrell Carl, calling doing? in from Dallas, Texas. Thank you for calling, KB. Oh, he's down there in the thick of it all. Hey, hey, hey Carl, could I you do me a favor and turn down your volume because we're getting that? Okay, yeah, we're getting an echo. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I just heard it. Just, give me one second. Okay. Yes, uh, it just it really breaks my heart, fellas. You know, because Fry, as you know, me being from St. Louis, mm-hmm. I have we we've been harassed constantly. Right. We get pulled over by the cops. They make us get out of the car in 10 inches of snow on our knees talking about they're checking out registration and license and running, running the tags mm. and they're in the car smiling. Right. Mm. You know, my, the point that I wanted to bring up today, and I really appreciate you fellas for shining the light on this is we all have kids, right? Mm. What Families. Do you think our kids, what do you think our kids are thinking about exactly. as they see this? We're working hard. We're doing everything they tell us to do. We're college educated. Mm -hmm. We have very good jobs. Mm -hmm. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. And every time you turn around, what do you see? I fear for my life. Right. I fear for my life. Yeah. You know, regardless of what you see on Facebook, they got guys with machete going at cops and they all of a sudden tase them. They want to talk to them. But when Mm -hmm. it comes to us, unfortunately, you don't even have 30 seconds to do anything. And they just start shooting. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and it's sad. It's, right. it's sad. You it's know. not. It's sad. It's unfair. It's, it's, it's the opposite of, of what you would think of in a just civil society. It's as if they go into it automatically assuming many. And this is not every cop. But I think that the problem There's is too many it's, of them. It's just is that it's enough of them for there to be uh, a problem, and right. it's an obvious problem. And we're catching it on videotape. And what's making me so upset about this is that you will see it on videotape, and then you will have a newscaster saying, "We don't know the full story. Perhaps before exactly. it happened, then this person has done this, and we got to wait until the full videotape comes out." Come on, man. Yeah. Thanks for calling, man. We hey, appreciate man. you. And, and, and I, let me just say this real quick. Yeah, Woody. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to take up no more of your time, but no, I live in ahead. Dallas. Uh-huh. And I really wanted to comment to y'all mm-hmm. because that incident happened 15 uh, miles from my house. Wow. And they shut they shut down the whole downtown all day today. Mm-hmm. Business was stopped. And it, it was just a madhouse down there. And they have a big section of it roped off where people can't even get to work. You know, they can't. Some of the people couldn't go back home last wow. night. So, wow. you know, I'm, I just wanted to shed a light on y'all, you know, seeing it firsthand here mm-hmm. in Dallas. You know, they're, they're still on lockdown right now and they got helicopters flying all over the place and, you know, it's right. probably going to be that way for the next couple of days. Yeah. That, KB, thank you so much for calling in, my brother. You know how much I appreciate yes, it and how much I appreciate you. Thanks, KB. Okay. Have a great weekend, man. Great, 
great show, fellas. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, and this, let me tell you something about human nature. Carla, hold on just a second. Let me say something about human nature. When you thrash out in violence, violence begets violence, and violence it can come back to you in in various measures and degrees. So, if we are putting it out there that we are a violent society, and those people in authority are putting out violence and and constantly putting out violence, what we do, what I do, is I come back nonviolently. I come back and show protest. I show love and nonviolent. But humans vary along a, a wide spectrum. There are some humans that are going to protest nonviolently as they should. But don't be surprised if you get some loose cannon out there that comes back at you just as violent as what you come at him with. Right. Don't think that every person is rational enough to take this frustration and channel it channel it in the proper direction. Right. So as stupid and crazy and evil as that person in Dallas uh, um, reacted to what he thought was his way of invoking justice based on the stuff that's been going on. The more you put that energy out, this is the type of stupid stuff that happens, just like with Donald Trump, the type of energy he puts out there, that stuff will come back. Right. We got another caller. You still on the line? Go ahead. So call, call it. Could you give me the, uh, your name and the city you're calling in from? Uh, my name is Richard. I uh, I stay in Long Beach, California. Hey, Hi, Richard, Richard. How you Thank doing? Thank you for calling, Richard. Uh, I'm okay. Um, I just wanted to say I had an incident that happened to me about maybe four years ago. Mm-hmm. I was in uh, Orange County, California, and I uh, was pulled over because I was in an area that had uh, high surveillance by Orange County Sheriff's Department. And I had my scrubs on because I was a medical student, and I was just over there visiting my friend at a coffee shop and it's no sooner than I left a helicopter was on top of me um, I was pulled over for a routine traffic stop and lo and behold after three canine unit dogs came and sniffed wow. my vehicle the officer planted a gram of cocaine in my hmm. ashtray and booked me for possession of uh, cocaine Mm-hmm. Um, I beat the case. I had it dismissed. It cost me almost $8,000. I took the ladder. But in the end, it just goes to show what type of uh, law enforcement agencies that wow. racially profile and do these type of things to young black men. Richard, I'm, I'm glad you were able to come out of this because I'm going to tell you, there's some people who are so impoverished they couldn't they can't afford come out that eight thousand dollars, and so their asses would be in jail right now. Thank you so much for, for calling, calling man. and thank you for sharing that story, and thank you for listening as well. Yeah, can we this, play that Obama clip? What the, uh, the President Obama clip when he uh, talked about the yeah, yeah, statistics? Yeah, play that for us real quick, uh, Jarvis. Because these are not isolated incidents. They're symptomatic of a broader set of racial disparities that exist in our criminal justice system. And I just want to give people a few statistics uh, to try to put in context why emotions are so raw around these issues. According to various studies, not just one, but a wide range of studies that have been carried out over a number of years. African Americans are 30 percent more likely than whites to be pulled over. After being pulled over, African Americans and Hispanics are three times more likely to be searched. Last year, African Americans were shot by police at more than twice the rate of whites. African Americans are arrested at twice the rate of whites. African American defendants are 75 percent more likely to be charged with offenses carrying mandatory minimums. They receive sentences that are almost 10 percent longer than comparable whites arrested for the same crime. So that if you add it all up, the African American and Hispanic population who make up only 30 percent of the general population make up more than half of the incarcerated population. Listen, guys, um, again, the vast majority of the police officers in the United States are law-abiding officers, the ones that I have in my life. I spent Memorial Day at a, at a high-ranking police officer's house, the most moral and just 
and, 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 and gracious man you will ever meet. That's There's just an element within the departments that they just need to root the out. Screening it's just process that. has to be better. That's it. Got to be a better screening process. It's not the same at all, but you know how we say with ISIS – how the Muslim community needs to root out and they need to come out right. and, and kind of... There's um, an ISIS within the police department. Within the police department, there's an element where it's not all of you, but it's enough right. of you to make a real Extremist. systemic change. Extremist. And you can't make the change unless you admit that there's a problem and not run to the defense every time something like this comes up. Don't I mean, come on, don't let your lying eyes fool you. If you see a videotape when somebody's doing something wrong, then take it for what it is, deal with that fool, kick him out of the department, kick and ass. move on. Yeah, we got another caller. We got a caller coming through. Caller, hey, what's, Ro- what's your name and where are you calling Ron. from? How you doing, man? It's Michael Monimpour. Hey, Michael. Mike, Mike, thanks for calling in. Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing pretty well. Fantastic. Doing, but thank you for calling in. What's on your mind, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I as a human race, I feel like we've gone through so much, and we've gotten to a point where we've already gotten above slavery with the Jim Crow laws and uh, Rodney King, and it's just a shame to see that we're going through this again. And at a time where we're already dealing with so much in the world mm-hmm. with terrorism in the Middle East, I feel like Americans, we have to unite together and be as one. And right. tragedy such as this is just a major setback. And we really need to have a reality check, all of us together, and, you know, really stay at home. And this is not right. Uh, yeah. A lot of violence. And as crazy as the world we live in today with ISIS, Al Qaeda, you know, we need to all be together. Right, exactly. I appreciate that. Hey, hey, Michael, thank you so Thanks much for, for calling, calling in. And Mike, can continue to listen, please. You know how much I value your, your audience. We've got a second um, caller. Now, um, I have another caller coming yeah. in. Uh, caller, uh, can you come in, call in and give me your name and the city you're calling in from? Hey, Ron, it's Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Jess, how are you? Hey, how's good, it going? How are you? are doing pretty well, doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing great. Talk to me. Tell me what you got to say. What's on your mind, Jessica? Um, I, I was just listening. I don't know. I, of course, I, I'm extremely angry. Yeah, you should be. I, I'm extremely angry, but I'm probably the one who would probably be more angry. Like, um, I'm tired of peace. We are, we are always about peace. We have always been about peace. Mm, right. Um, but it, and that's always been. I, I've, I've listened to Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, it, it, we've always been about that. Mm-hmm. But it seems like, Still, I mean, no matter what we do, our kids are still getting murdered. We still don't have any justice in this country. We, you know, none of that, none of the, and, and I really don't really agree that that most cops are good and only a few are bad. I think it's the other way around. Really? It's a small percentage of good cops. And, mm. I, but I, and I think the whole department was built for this, this very, this very reason. Mm. They, it was built in slavery, pretty much. And that's what they did in slavery, exactly what they're doing now. So wow, that's deep. It, it's not. It's just more of the same, and and it's angering now. And I think I'm sorry. Now it's time to kick some ass. I'm, that that's just where I'm at. Okay, I know, I know we can't just all shoot each other, but it's got to be. There's different ways of kicking ass. I mean, you know, you can do it politically. I mean, we need to start changing laws now. Yeah. And stop being in, in denial about how huge this really is. Right, it's Jessica. Really bigger. Jessica, that that's a great yeah. point, and thank Good you point, so much Jessica. for calling in. Thank, thank you so you. much for listening to Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All I right. mean, listen, I understand her frustration, man, yeah. but you know, I think you, there's no other alternative uh, as far as we can't be aggressive. We can't start shooting people like like our, our guy down in uh, uh, in Dallas, but you know, we can affect policy. We can change policy, but you know, Congress is so screwed up right now, as we all know. Uh, I don't. I don't know if the it Republicans are on board the, with this situation. Well, you know, it is has it, to it, be the grassroots. See, because the thing is, is that almost everything that's, especially with with Congress, a lots of them are, you know, the say in the House of Representatives and the Senate. It's going to have to happen. Caller, you're going to have to hold for a second. Thank you. Um, it's going to have to happen at the grassroots. Where at the local level, we're going to have to make such a swell. Of, of support on all sides of all good standing citizens to say that these things need to change because the local sheriffs and the chiefs of police, all that kind of stuff are, are, are sometimes elected or appointed by the mayor. So this all takes place at the local level. Hey man, we need to, at the local level, I, listen. push for 
reforms. I have to I have to disagree with you on that. I think Loretta Lynch, the Department of Justice, needs to from the top down start firing these folks. She start can't getting, fire the, the well, federal government whatever they has can a do. jurisdiction. That's what I'm saying. Well, listen, at the local they level. need to start investigating in, in Ferguson, for example. Eighty percent of the tickets, I think, were given to folks, African American people, and they were uh, jaywalking tickets for third three hundred dollars that they couldn't pay, that accumulated with fines, and they couldn't get their driver's license, and they had to ride the bus, mm-hmm. and that's how they kept the municipality uh, intact through the the funds that exactly. from people riding uh, public transportation. Exactly. So that was a, a system in place to keep them down, and they cha- they're starting to change that, but they have to look at every police. Uh, 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 office or, or state and municipality and from the top down start to thoroughly investigate and see you know the, the consistent bad behavior okay and correct okay so let's let's so let's and then let's from take the a bottom ma- from both, the, both both angles there you go top and bottom so it's from the top and top and bottom yeah um got caller call. um we got a caller calling caller please give me your name and the city you're calling in from and thank you for calling hey hey Von nickelberry metro detroit area Fine. Uh, thanks for calling quick. In. how you guys doing doing good good well. how are you Hey, 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 great. I'm doing good. Great topic as always. I just want to say this. One of the things that that irritates me uh, is when people begin to talk about the background of the victim. And the reason I say that is we can't, number one, serve serve as a judge of the jury. Number two, imagine if someone would have shot uh, 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 Malcolm Little. Mm-hmm. We were never had Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, in the, the, the event, if you look at, even from my church folk, mm-hmm. who like to quote scripture, if you look at Saul's record of killing and persecuting the church, if you would have snuffed him out and well, killed him because of whatever crime, mm-hmm. you would have never had one of the greatest evangelists of the Christian church. Mm-hmm. And so when you when you decide that you're just going going to end somebody's book who is in the middle of their chapter or in the middle mm. of their book mm. and you're going to put the end at it, you just missed or could miss the glory of what these people really could have contributed to society. Woo, and I just got to chill. Thank you guys very much. Uh, hey, you guys hey, hey thank you very much, Vaughn. Oh, and then he you, makes Vaughn. a good point. Yeah. What they do, lots of times, well, I shouldn't say they, what the media does, and it's up to responsible media because they told the line. I heard from uh, one of the media outlets about um, Mr. Castile, Philando Castile, that, oh, he had some run-ins with the law. He was driving without insurance. He had it a doesn't matter, man. Tickets. You shot the man He had dead. some parking tickets. What the hell does him having some parking tickets Has or to driving without it. insurance, how does that merit or any way, shape, or form put this, besmirch his character to the point where somehow he may have, in a certain way, been shady enough to deserve being shot in no, the car? No, that's wrong. It doesn't matter. And the media needs to be held accountable for stupid stuff like that. Yeah, man. So at, And at the same time you haven't heard anything in regards to whether or not the officer that shot him had any sort of real issues because they get to go home 30 days on le- paid leave paid leave while this other dude's going to the morgue the grave got a caller started caller uh what's your yeah. name and where are you calling from i'm calling from los angeles california and uh this is roxy Hi, Hi, roxy. Los angeles. how you doing Hi, roxy. hey what's going on what's on very your mind good, roxy? very good so um, what I want to say kind of hits upon what one of your callers just said um, a couple of minutes ago when he had mentioned, you know, we're so past certain issues and, um, and stuff like that. But um, one of the things that kept running in my head today with this whole narrative that we're all talking about on social media is actually Langston Hughes' to poem, A Dream Deferred. Now, he wrote that in the 1950s about Harlem and the unrest that was happening back in those days with the civil rights. And, you know, it's so um, supportive of the narrative that we're going through today. And one of the things that I notice is that things have, what we, what we should start questioning in this narrative is how much things have really changed. Mm. And if, if, if anything has at, all, has at all, it's been 65 years since Langston Hughes wrote that poem. Yeah. Mm. And the same exact things and themes and all that other stuff that they were going through then, we're going through now, but everything is just mo- more covert. Right. Mm-hmm. So my question is, what can we do now? You know, um, we're sitting here and we're having this amazing conversation. For the first time, I am starting to see among my Caucasian friends or non-black friends actually participating in this conversation. And I had made mention 
um, as well that, you know, we can't have change without everyone as a part of this. That's right. That's white, true. Completely black, true. That's you know, very Asian, true. Everybody. That's yeah. true. You know what I mean? So w- the question is, I mean, we're all talking about all of this, but what are we to do now? What are the next steps? Because in another week, we've got the Republican convention coming on, and mm-hmm. that's what the news media is going to be about. They're going to be right. past this exactly. cycle. Right. How do we get this to actually stick this time? Roxy, thank you, thank you very much, Roxy. Any time. Roxy, thank you. thank you so much for calling. Call you know, again much sometime, appreciate Roxy. appreciate you um, listening to the show as well. So thank you, Roxy. Thank appreciate you. that. Thank Roxy you. makes some excellent point because, okay, now this is the deal. And and part part of it is our fault if we think about it. Now, if Wait, you have a – it's part of it is our fault. When I say our, I mean When I say us, I mean the American public okay. because – if you are liberal leaning, you're going to watch MSNBC, maybe some CNN. If you're conservative, you're going to watch Fox. Fox. So already we're we're separating ourselves. And when I say watch, I mean watch. We don't read anymore. So that means we're only subject to those things that we watch on TV. Now, me, I read. I, I, I don't read the right. I read The Economist a lot. And The Economist does a lot of overreaching, right. very br- – international stuff maybe i need to get down into the dirt and read more local stuff Listen, but the point is this is yeah. that because we don't read as much as we should as a public then that means we are pretty much captive to what we see on screen yeah and what we see on screen take is according to what they want to show us right so that means that local it, news is going to show a black or latino shooting or robbing someone and exactly. you're going to create this Exactly. preconceived notion about black and Latinos you're going to be afraid of them or what they're going to do is that they're only going to show the horrors of what happened in Dallas and they're going to completely sweep under the rug what happened in St. Louis try to dismiss and what it. happened in Minneapolis yeah, they're and try it's to partially it. our fault uh, we have another caller caller could I have your name and um, the city you're calling in from please Talia from Los Angeles hi Talia, hi, Talia. thank you for calling how in. are you Talia what's on your mind today I'm good Um, I was just checking into my Yahoo and I was looking at what the banner was on Yahoo and it's Mm -hmm. troublesome that in light of everything that happens in the world and the continual, um, neglect of, uh, what's really happening in terms Mm -hmm. of like racial oppression and Mm -hmm. cops and stuff like that, but right on the banner of Yahoo, it's, you know, all about the, the kind of oppression of police and and Mm -hmm. what happens. The incident in Dallas, yeah, it's kind of Mm -hmm. taken over. And yeah, it's, it's upsetting. It is very, very upsetting. upsetting. And yeah. if, and um, and yeah. Talia, may I ask what your ethnicity is? I am a white Jewish female who has been pulled over in cars multiple times and mm-hmm. driving with black male friends okay. and asked by police officers, "I'm okay." Okay. okay. All right. So you you've fallen victim to yeah. to the yeah. harassment as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Talia, thank you so much for calling in and, and providing your Please insight. call us back again, Talia. Absolutely. Please Appreciate do. that. Thank so, you. So, so listen, I wanted to make a statement about, mm-hmm. you know, what are we to do about it in terms of there's nothing we can do in terms you know, of keeping it in the uh, – well, there, there are some things we can do keeping in the in the mind's eye of, of the media. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how exactly we do that. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to a friend uh, today, and I said, you know, the difference between – Uh, African-Americans in this country is that if you're walking down the street and you look inside of the window of a art gallery and there's a party going on and there's all white people, I'd be okay walking in saying hello and joining the party. Mm -hmm. Reverse that, it's a room full of black folks and a white person walking down the sidewalk, 90% of them will be afraid to go into that room full of African-American folks. And there's that's, that's the issue there. The issue is there's, there's, I don't want to say, uh, there's an unfamiliarity with folks that are not like you, but we've been forced to assimilate over so many years that we're okay going wherever and, 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 and wanna, plugging ourselves I, into I wanna, any type I, of situation. I'm explain it. And this so is, the cops that are shooting these guys mm-hmm. are afraid of them. They're not looking at them as human beings. They're looking at them as targets. And there has to be some form of assimilation. We, you have to get out of your cars. You have to go into the neighborhoods. You have to shake hands, kiss babies, and do whatever you have to do. And that's why the sheriff's department ha- has had such success because they have to go through the prison system before they're ever allowed to go out onto the street. The LAPD, for example, not the case. And LAPD the, has made strides. They made definite strides. There's other pockets of the I'm country. Not downing the but LAPD. this is but this is the deal though. I think by and large, what you're saying, a lot of that has to do I mean, think about this. There and you have to understand, this thing 
there's been certain points in history where we've had chances to get everything right. Obviously, not to have to go into slavery in the first place. That's an obvious. Right. Second one is after the Civil War during Reconstruction, where instead of you know, causing complete assimilation or c- complete integration, they put the former slave masters in control of the towns, and that's when you know NRA was born, and that's when you know a lot of the KKK was born, and all that type of stuff. That's still and then the third today. time was the Civil Rights Movement, yeah. where there's real chance for change. The only time things things change within certain people's hearts. Because, like I said, you know this, my world, I have my close, like, family. I have, like, family that's not black. I have. So I mean, do I. Like, we all, we look all at do. Me. We, we have. I mean, it's so there's this is not an indictment of all way. It's about those few and, or po- those and many. positions. Of, or you can be a flat out racist. I don't give a damn. You could be a flat out racist. But just I don't, don't want you to be have, a cop. Just don't have a badge and a gun along with it. You can yeah. call me whatever little name you want to call me. Just don't have a badge and a gun and carry that sort of sickness in exactly. a p- position of power or authority. We have another caller. You just don't do it. Okay. And you know what? I would be the exact same way if someone was saying something anti-Semitic as well. I would be the exact same way. Anyway, caller, uh, could you please uh, give me your name and the city you're calling in from? Um, my name's Brian. I'm calling in from uh, 90025. Brian. Hey, Brian. How's Thank it going? Thank you for calling in. Hey, how are you? Doing yeah, fantastic. Listening to your show. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I'm sure there's nobody out there that wants to condone any type of violence. But when you look at the way the African-American community have been disserved across the country, across decades by the police force, uh, at some point, you've got to understand that people aren't going to take it anymore. Right. And I just, I'm surprised it happened, hasn't happened before. Yeah. And mm. I'm surprised it hasn't happened, you know, across the country whenever these things happen. It would be, it's not something I want to see. But it, it, it's just unfortunate that our criminal justice system, our politicians, our leaders, and our courts all fail to convict any of these guys. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You're absolutely so what right. what happens? You know, and if if you look at you just mentioned the the anti-Semitic, uh, you know, the, the Jewish people in that comment, and you know, the Jewish people go in and and mow the grass in Palestine ever so often whenever they where a few rockets come over, even if it doesn't kill people. Unfortunately, it has in some circumstances. But they defend themselves, and our country gets behind them and says, "Hey, we support you. We def- we support your. You you need to defend yourself." Mm-hmm. And uh, but unfortunately, when it comes to people of color, I don't hear that from our politicians. No. In fact, I hear them lining up behind the police force, which obviously I don't want to see any innocent people die on any side. Mm-hmm. But where would you know why? Where were they? Lo- Oh, I think we lost you. Yeah, Brian, thank you so much for calling, for calling in. Brian. I really appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Thank Brian you. makes a, 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 an excellent point, and that's what I was saying earlier. You can't – the thing is, is that humans, we're all different. Just the same way as we have people like the people that are in, in my family, which and they know who they are, who I consider. I love them, and they, right. and they are not black, all right? Those people – and at the same time, you got the ones that are the racist ones that you know have a, some antiquated caveman type of idea of civilization. Yeah. So human beings, they, they run the entire spectrum. So that means that reactions, just like humans, run the entire spectrum. So if you constantly bombard these people with things Negative. that make them yeah. frustration, negativity, and violence, you can't be surprised. <laughs> Right. If some w- w- wicked or wacky person Pops on that off. far end of that spectrum comes back in the same way and 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 somewhat brings that uh, frustration to the fore right. in a violent manner, right? So kill it at the core, meaning don't allow for these triggers, these oppressive, you no know, aggravating triggers to to go on. And the point, the fact of the matter is, they know that everyone's videotaping them, and every week someone yeah. else gets killed. Oh, we, we got, got another, another call. caller. Caller, can I have your name and the city you're calling in from, please? Hi, it's uh, Kay Hutz. How are you two today? Good. How doing are you, well. Kay? What's I'm doing well. Um, I actually I had to call in today um, because I'm 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 not really angry. I'm I'm hurt 
mm. at the events that are going on in in the U.S. right now. Mm. Yeah. And um, I feel like over time we have come so far mm. um, just as a nation and then specifically as a black community, we have come so far. And I feel like that everything is going in reverse. Mm, yeah. um, I feel like the the, the, t- the clock is ticking backwards, mm. um, and, and, and it hurts me because I grew up in a mostly private school, I grew and, and it was a black private school mostly, mm-hmm. so I grew up to be a proud black person, and I've always been that way. However, my neighborhood was always very diverse. My mm-hmm. first friends were not my color, and we are still friends to this day, some yeah. of us. Mm-hmm. And and I've I've had good experiences with cops. Me personally, as a black woman, I literally got out of a speeding ticket by telling the truth. I was speeding in an area where wow. black people are known for being stopped mm-hmm. in my state. And I knew I was speeding. As soon as I realized I was speeding, I slowed down. When he stopped me, he asked me, did you know you're speeding? I was like, yes. And literally, I got out of a ticket because I told him the truth. I was mm-hmm. jamming to Mariah Carey. And uh, I asked him if he knew the song, and I was like, but as soon as I realized I was jamming, you know, I slowed down a little bit. Right, right. And he actually, you know, let me go and didn't even give me a ticket. But then I've also seen where some of um, the black friends that I know, I've seen their stories. Mm -hmm. I've seen where where we've been mistreated. Um, I've seen the Sandra Bland story. And even now, sometimes I get anxious if I forget to put my turn signal on when I'm switching lanes, even though I've had good experiences. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've had great experiences. Where is that understanding from some of the other races when they try to blame us for getting killed? Yeah, where, yeah. I have the understanding. I had good experiences. Where is that for us? Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very, for calling Kate, in. Thank you so much for points. calling in, and, and, thank, and please continue yeah. to listen and, and call in more often. Absolutely. But I see black males being gunned down. I don't see that many black females being gunned down, but but thanks for, for that uh, perspective. Yeah. And, we and, have another and caller. It, and we have another caller? Yeah. Okay. Well, the no, thing is, is that she made a good point. The, the threat, we do have a caller. Um, caller, could you please give me your name and the city you're calling in from, please? Yes, uh, my name is John Henderson, and I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Hey, John, John how thank are you? you for calling in, John. What's on your mind tonight, John? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, basically, I'm. Uh, where do I start? I'm. I'm. I'm disappointed. You know, mm-hmm. at a lot of things. Um, first of all, I want to send my condolences to the uh, Sterling family and the Castell family. Um, you know. They have to prepare for funerals and whatnot this weekend, so that that's not a good feeling. And also, in the same note, I want to send my condolences to the five. Absolutely, in Dallas. Who Absolutely, died. yeah. You there know, you go. We, we 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 give them a hard time, but they're dead, and their families have to deal with that as well. So, Wait, we don't give them a know, hard time. We don't give them a hard time, John. We give crooked cops no. a hard time. There's a difference. Sure. Yeah, well, crooked cars. I understand what you're saying, but yeah. at the yeah. same time, you have five dead. We don't know if they were crooked or what they were. We don't know anything about these right. you know, five cops. Yeah, so, no, you're right. You're so right. We, still gotta, we still have to send out because they have family and kids. Right, correct. So, you know, the same way we do with, with, with Alton and, 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 and um, the other young yeah. men from Minnesota, yeah. we got to do the same thing. We, 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 gotta, we, have to, we have to honor both. Yes, right. that's you very know, true, John. It, right. It, 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 it's 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 it's, a, it's an, an unfortunate situation mm-hmm. that happened, and um, you know, it just goes to show you where we are in this country. You know, yeah, that's right. right. It, it, it's a Baltimore, good point of where we are. Yeah, and especially after what's happened in Baltimore, after what's Baltimore, happened in Ferguson. I just yeah. knew this was going to happen. You know, but then you had you know uh, Reverend you know Jamal Bryant trying to you know uh, calm all the um, uh, gang leaders down and whatnot to quell the situation. And that seemed to work, but I don't think anybody knew this was going to happen. And my my second point is, you know, former Congressman um, Joe Walsh, you know, he he, he I heard made about that. Uh, uh, basically he made a point to President Obama saying this is a new America, like this is like blood on your hands, and you know the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, I heard about your heard, fault. Yeah, I heard Obama about that. Ready for a new America. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, John, John we got to we got to cut you off right there, John. Thanks, John. Thank you so appreciate much for calling. Call. We really appreciate your support, and please continue to call, call us and back continue sometime. To listen. Thanks a lot. Hey, listen, you know, this has been going on. It's just highlighted because everyone has video cameras, but this has been going on as long as I've been alive. And, and it's just more prevalent in terms of the media and, and the eye of the average American because 
of video cameras. This is not something new. Obama did. This didn't happen under his administration. This has always happened, folks. And that's that's what you have to realize. This is not that's new true. behavior. And, I, and I'm going to continue to say this, and I want it to be plain and simple. My overall experience and and what I perceive is the, 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 the experience of policemen within the United States is that the vast majority of police officers are law-abiding, moral, good citizens that have a tough job and they follow it along the letter of the law. That's what it is. What I'm also saying in the same breath, because I am one of those few people that can keep two thoughts in my mind at one time, what I am also saying is that there is an element, either systemic or just individuals, that there's enough of them within these departments that cause this type of issue wherein you get crazies like you got the one the one in Dallas or you get this overall frustration wherein people think that the entire police department across the country they think that all of them are corrupt and that's not the case. No. So I would say it's incumbent upon the vast majority to quell the and good cops, pull get and rid of the get bad the cops. bad ones out of Forget there. Forget the blue shield, get rid of these dumb get them cops out of there and get them out of there. We have another caller? We have a caller. Caller, can I have your name and the city you're calling in from? Hey, Ron. What is this? R.C. 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 Thank you, you for calling in. What's going on, fella? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm listening to the show, and I'm glad you brothers have this show. That's incredible. Thank, thank you so you. much. The problem, thank you. the problem that we really miss is the fact that of the cause of the cause and effect of this whole thing. Slavery was a business, American business. Chaos is a, <clears throat> excuse me, is American business. Mm. We have prisons that are owned <clears throat> by uh, independent owners that on the stock market. These are businesses that strive for negativity. And they have to keep them full. So if we don't understand the actual cause, we'll never get to the effect. And another thing, all of us are from L.A. In order for us to do some things, we have to start roundtables. Mm. Sitting in a room, having these discussions every week among, amongst one another. Yeah, right. That's only what's going to change. When Martin Luther King changed the civil rights thing, everybody was around each other all the time. Right. Yeah. True. True. Thank RC, you for calling, yeah, man. That's that's some RC, great points. That's some good stuff. Great points, and thank Appreciate you so it, much RC. for calling in. Call and again please sometime. Continue, yeah, please continue to listen. RC made some very good points, to, and it goes back to what I was saying, and that's that we have to mobilize, but it takes all of us. It takes every person within the communities, those that are affected and those are not affected. That means that those are white and those that are black. They all need to come together and speak because it's about right or you wrong. You know, listen, we've we've come together. We have marched. We have done everything. It has to happen within the police department. You know, the Justice, de ju the Justice Department, L Loretta Lynch, has the highest law enforcement office in the land. Mm -hmm. It's up to her, it's incumbent be upon her to dig deep and change this. And and that that has to that has to start from the top down. No, and no, also no. from a grassroots level. Ha but we have to you, meet them halfway. We, we have ha we, we have to their jurisdictions. The federal government has certain jurisdictions. The state right. government has certain jurisdictions and the uh, local government has uh, government has certain jurisdictions. The same way with schools. The federal government can help with some portion of schools, but that's funded at a local level. So you have to look at those jurisdictions, and that's who those people are in, uh, are beholden to. It's a local level. So we're talking about the local police force. The local police force, unless they have a civil rights violation violation that levels to the ri rises to the level of a federal uh, 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 crime, uh -huh. then the federal government isn't Can't involved. Can't touch. Right. So that means that it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can at the local level to affect local government. Same thing with state government, and then when the federal government applies, then she comes in with her you know, uh, uh, far-reaching arm and do the same thing. But right. it has to happen on both ends and squeeze in and squeeze out the junk that doesn't need to be within That's right. our you system. That's right. you got to filter out the junk. Absolutely. That's right. So you know, so each city that this occurs in, they've been able to go in and effectively kind of change things. And, mm -hmm. and so this is the next city on the, on the list, on the target list by the Justice Department, mm -hmm. um, that being – uh, I don't know if it's going to be the city or the whole state of, 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 of Minnesota uh, as far as uh, Philandro Castile is concerned, but certainly the, the municip municipality. What's which, the governor of Minnesota? What's his name? I was impressed uh, with him. His name is, is Castile as his well. His last name is Castile as yeah, well. Yeah, his last name. But yeah. He is uh, one of the type of politicians that just said what it is. And I he said that if, if uh, Philando uh, 
Castillo, Castillo was was white. He said if they, if they were white, would this happen? No. Probably not. He said the he simple said, fact frankly, that he it had, would not have it wouldn't happen. happen if the he was fact white. that he even acknowledged it. It just takes us light years towards the future, and it makes me feel a lot better that He's justice being crucified, will be though. done. I can't believe he would say something yeah, like well, that. Because you're going to have those idiots yeah. that just don't want to believe their own two eyes. It's, okay, and let's just say, uh, for one, common sense means a lot to me. So what guy, common sense, and other people out there that are skeptics about this, I want you to put your common sense hat and think about this. If you have one. What is the odds of you sitting in a passenger seat of a car with your seatbelt on, with your seatbelt on, you have a four-year-old sitting behind you and your girlfriend in the driver's seat, but you're going to choose now as a time to reach for a gun and have, have a, a gun fight, fight with a police officer standing right in front of you, looking right at you. With his revolver, revolver pulled on you. Even if his revolver wasn't pulled, it's still in his shoulder. Is it? We've all seen those uh, Wild West shows where they have, you know, like yeah. where they had to walk ten paces, turn around and shoot. You still have to draw. So even if he was the ultimate dummy, and, and announced that you have this, a firearm, he Officer, announced that he firearm. had a firearm and that he and had I'm a license permit. to carry. And so, and he has a four year old sitting behind him, and his woman sitting in the, in the driver's seat. So now he's going to pull his gun. That makes absolutely no sense. No sense. So even those people who are skeptics, put your common sense hat on. Put your common sense hat on, and, and he worked tell at you, this no, kid. This, no this Philandra worked at a Minnesota school uh, mm-hmm. uh, in, uh, in 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 Minnesota, mm-hmm. uh, and the teachers, uh, the instructor, the other, they would just they have nothing but praise to say about how nice he was and and how everyone considered him, you know, Mister mm-hmm. Castile. Uh, uh, just a great gentleman, and yeah. the kids loved him. And he's a mild mannered guy, and he was loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 he's, he's he's gone. He's gone because he had a broken tail light. Really, that's okay. That makes no sense. No, it makes no sense. And this that guy better no not get off. Now, listen, I got to say this. I meant I was going to say this about Alton Sterling, but when they had him on the ground, his right arm. If you watch the video closely, the gun was in his pocket. I think at the at that point, he was so pissed off. He may have actually been reaching into his pocket to get his gun or for his gun. Ah, that makes no sense either. Listen, watch the video. I'm saying these guys may get off because of this point that I'm making right now, and you heard it here first. That makes no sense. None, none of it made sense, but I'm saying the guys may get off because of this point that I'm making right now. If you watch the video again, when you go home, folks, watch the video again. When he's on the ground, and you know, at the end of the video, they pull the gun out of his pocket. Mm-hmm. But their excuse is going to be that he was armed and reaching for his gun, and you can kind of see his shoulder shifting. I don't know if that was because he was they were beating him or whatever, but I got a feeling that that's going to be their excuse, and they're going to get off for Alton Sterling's death. Well, I'm murder. Gonna, I'm going to be murdered some, that man. I'm going to be in some trouble with my my parents and my grandma who may be listening to this, but I'm going to curse. I'm going to say that's some bullshit. That's that straight is straight bullshit. Well, and I the agree. The reason why it is is because again, that makes no sense. This is why. And again, common sense hat on everyone. Common sense. They don't if use this, common sense hats. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Well, my, they the don't people, go through this with common some, sense. Yeah, but all the guys if, have gotten off. If you have, no one's been convicted. Okay, now, yeah, that's true. Now, common sense hat. You had two officers flanking you. Okay. Now is the time to have you don't wait until they're both on top of you where one has a gun pulled and sitting in your chest for the, you to then try to go for your gun when he has a gun in your chest. Already, already drawn, and now you're going to reach for your gun, and he's on top of you. He can see where your hands are. That makes no sense. None at all. But, but I, I guarantee you that's what again, they're going to come up with. Again. You heard it here, you heard it here first. Anyway, um, guys, this has been a very, very, very passionate show, and it was meant to be so because we have um, – our, we are a great country. We are a great country. But what makes us great is the fact that we can speak about things like this and we can face our ugly sores and we can do what it takes for us to try to heal these wounds. And there are some wounds that maybe uh, the vast majority of America just you know, turned a blind eye to or just thought it was something in the past. But it's prevalent. And things like technology, Facebook, iPhones and things of that sort. They're able to bring these sores to light. So now it's incumbent upon us rational, reasonable, civilized human beings that are citizens of this great country to go ahead and deal with it and purge out, purge those mindsets that are stuck in a, in a past that we're not proud of. And film everything. Pull your camera phone. We out. need to go ahead and purge that out of our system, and especially out of positions of authority. We've got a caller. 
And this will be our last caller for the day. Caller, um, be brief with us, but can I have your name and the city you're calling in from, please? Caller, are you there? Are you there? Okay, maybe, maybe the caller call hung up. Okay, oh, what's your the, name? Where are you calling from? Mike Eccles from Los Angeles. Hey, Mike, what's Mike, on your mind tonight, going, man? We got, a, we got a quick hey, minute. Uh, I just wanted to uh, quick reiterate from uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, going on what he just said about uh, they may get off because of the technicality. If they go for manslaughter instead of murder, uh -huh. there's a much higher probability of them getting a conviction. They have proved way too much to get conviction for murder. Right. No manslaughter, it might, it might work out for us. That's what I had to say. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Mike. Mike. Mike appreciate thank you so that, much man. for calling in. You were cutting in Mike and out made a little a good bit, but point. I think we got you. And, you know, and, and our, real quick, R.C. Oliver, he commented on Facebook. And I want you to know, R.C., that we hear you about the cause and effect uh, issues that cause this and that there is a business behind having people incarcerated. There is a business behind There's a behind lot it. of jobs. The privatization of prisons, which we will get into one day, yeah. and even keeping uh, – Keep a municipalities afloat. Some of them, like you said in Ferguson, they used to make money on the backs of the poor people, right. giving them tickets and stuff and, and saying, okay, they, now this person has to pay right. and then also it secures jobs. If the jails are empty all the time, then that means that someone's they won't get any money. money from the state to help fund the jails, and that means right. someone's not making money. So there's an economic development thing around this too, and that's an entirely it's different so, conversation. It's such a big issue. It's such a it's big gotta issue. It's got to be addressed in many areas. Absolutely. And, and so, R.C. Oliver, I want you know that we heard what you said and, Thanks, uh, and we're with you guys thank you so much for listening to us thank you for listening to my rant uh my and dad please excuse me and god forgive me for my <laughs> language it's that son. this is something that um that's that we're very passionate about and um and all free thinking just individuals should be just as passionate about everybody this because should be upset we are all in this thing together and thank you so much for, for, for joining us. So yeah. this is going to wrap up this week with Focus with Ron Frierson. Oh, real Your quick. And I have my sponsor. I almost forgot. Primary so sponsor. Caught up. And my primary sponsor is Javago Watches. Javago. Javago Watches. Great watches. Fine brands and men's and women's styles. Go to the website, www.javagowatches.com, and choose out one of their many assortment and many arrays of, of styles. And, gorgeous and, watches. And very gorgeous. And different colors and in men's and women's fashions again. Or you can go to Amazon once you fit, pick out a style that you like. Go to Amazon and you may be able to get it at a discount, which is fantastic. Yes. Again, that's www.javagowatches.com. Thank you guys again for joining us. Hey, guys, listen. If you happen to get pulled over by a police officer this weekend. Tape it. G yeah. Start your video camera. Be polite. Just say, you know, yes, sir, no, sir. You don't want to get shot, folks. The, the bottom line is no matter how angry you are, have a discussion. You Maybe you can have a discussion with the guy about how he feels about the situation. But, but do not get yourself in any predicaments to where you can't go home to your family. Okay? You know what? I'm going to tell you something even more. You be you. No, don't. If you no, are that you, guy, don't be you. No, you be you. <laughs> at the same time, I mean, you don't have to be belligerent. If you yeah. if you're being don't belligerent, be if you're being belligerent, that just means you don't have any home training. If you are just be you, just don't be in fear and just and, and at the same time, just be respectful and just be you. I I am assuming that you are respectful individuals who are raised properly as youth to be But you get pissed off sometimes they pull you over. This stuff reason. does piss but you just, off. Just keep keep your hands on the steering wheel. Try not to be too upset about it because okay. I know how you feel. And I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, I am too. Wow. Thank you, guys. Be safe out there. Have a great uh, God weekend, bless guys. you, and we will see you guys next week at 5 o'clock. Focus with Ron Frierson. Take care. Peace out. Mm -hmm.